Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where those of you who've been following us recently will know that we have devoted our last few Saturdays to non-Sudoku puzzles um, that have been um, recommended to us. And we're going to continue that series today by having a look at a puzzle called Snake Egg. Uh, this is by the great Turkish constructor Serkan Yurekli, who of course it's one of the brilliant minds behind a website called gmpuzzles.com. And if you're not familiar with gmpuzzles.com, you really must uh, go and find it. Um, I'll put a link under the video. Um, I think originally it was the brainchild of my friend Thomas Snyder, uh, the three-time world Sudoku champion, world puzzle champion as well, a brilliant, brilliant mind. And um, yeah, Thomas created this website, but then Sirkan now, I think, runs it with Thomas. And what they do is every day of the week, you get a new um, a new logic puzzle. Uh, sometimes they are Sudokus as well, but they're all handmade by some great constructors. Um, and a, for a couple of weeks, uh, every, I think they run quarterly, they're sort of uh, subscription services, a quarterly subscription where you subscribe, you get a quarter's worth of puzzles. Um, but at the start of a quarter, they have a whole bunch of free puzzles to sort of show you um, show you what happens. So I'm just scrolling through some of them here. Some of these names you'll be very familiar with if you know the world of puzzles as to these constructors. Oh, there's, there's, oh, that's, is that this snake egg? No, I think our snake egg has a two in the grid, I saw. Is that wrong? <laughs> that's right. Okay, so anyway, definitely check out uh, gmpuzzles.com. It is wonderful. Um, but anyway, we're going to be having a look at this puzzle, which Sirkan has made especially for us. Thank you, Sirkan, for doing that. Mark has tested it. Mark says it's brilliant. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having a go at it. And that's what we're going to do in a moment or two's time. I have no, actually, I forgot to ask Mark. I've got no idea about the difficulty. Sirkan can, 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 can construct to any difficulty, including monstrously hard. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe judge it from the length of the video. Um, now, what else do I want to tell you about? Uh, loads of things. Uh, we're streaming. We're streaming tomorrow night. We're streaming a game called, um, thank goodness you're here, <laughs> which um, I think is going to be full of innuendo. Um, somebody has warned us there is a swear word in it. So um, if you might be offended by such things, Maverick, I doubt, would be offended by a swear word. Maverick's about to buzz past my window. Um, then, then don't watch. But assuming, assuming that's not too much for you, then do. We'd love to have your company tomorrow night, ten o'clock UK time. I think this game is meant to be very funny if you like British humour. So I'm hoping I'm going to like it. <laughs> anyway, that's that's what's coming up tomorrow. Also, not tomorrow, but on the twenty seventh of October. Apparently, there are still tickets left. Um, for this, uh, so our, our, our performance, I don't know if performance is the right word, but anyway, the Stratford Literary Festival have asked us to do uh, a live episode of Cracking the Cryptic, um, uh, which we're going to do at 10 a.m. look on Sunday the 27th. Um, and so it's, it, well, it's very, we're very honoured to be asked. And that's what we're going to do. There's going to be time for a Q&A and hopefully time for us to, to meet some of you, which is something we very rarely get to do. Um, yeah, so now, now I, I will just mention this because we only found out this after I made the initial announcement about this. Uh, there are not many tickets. Um, um, so if you have any interest, please do book a ticket soon because um, uh, it is going to sell out. There is no doubt. Um, if, if for no other reason the members of my family will book the tickets but but it, it's definitely going to sell out so if you don't want if you you know if, if you do want to go and you haven't got a ticket yet please do um, book soon so that you're not disappointed um, now let's do some birthdays Hanno it's your birthday over there in Germany and I know this because your wife Terry wrote to us um, and I think Terry was feeling a bit guilty that she didn't um, organise you a birthday shout out last year, <laughs> I know. Um, so um, she thought she would she would get on it this year, and I hope I hope I've done my job. And Hanno, I hope you have a brilliant birthday with, of course, lots of chocolate cake. Um, and then Noelia, Noelia, it's your birthday today, and I know this because your boyfriend Alvaro wrote to us, 
and, uh, and admitted that sometimes the two of you watch episodes together. But Noelia, you are the one who watches every day. So thank you for doing that. And I hope you have a great birthday today with, of course, a large slice of heavily iced chocolate cake. And with that said and done, let us turn our attention. Le so we're not doing Sudoku. We're going to have to build a snake. And I actually just thinking about snake egg puzzles. I've done, I would say, two or three of these on the channel before, and there is one I still remember, which was also a GM Puzzles um, uh, snake egg, and that was by Murat, um, Murat Chan Tonta from memory, and also also Turkish, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. But that was an incredible puzzle. So if this is anything like that, um, y yeah you're in for an absolute treat so the, these are the rules and i've got i snipped an example as well so i've got an example here so as i read the rules let's think about the example and make sure that we understand what we have to do so we have to draw a snake which is a one cell wide path in the grid whose head and tail are given by circled cells the snake can touch itself diagonally but cannot touch itself orthogonally or revisit any square besides the snake the remaining cells must form exactly nine white areas, one of each size from one to nine. Numbers in the grid must be part of white areas of the indicated size. So if we look at the example on the left, you can see that we've got the head and the tail of the snake given. And there's a two also. And in the final grid here, the, the two is part of a white celled area of size two. Oh, so the example is just one to five, isn't it? It's not one to nine, obviously. But you can see each of the white areas is of different size. And there is a snake in the grid. And that snake, it does touch itself diagonally just here, look. But it definitely doesn't touch itself orthogonally. What does that mean, an orthogonal, um, an orthogonal connection of a snake? Well, let's say there was a snake doing this in the grid. And then the snake went there. Now, the snake could not go there and continue its journey because the snake would have touched itself across a long boundary here. And that's an orthogonal connection, which is expressly against the rules. So to avoid doing that, the snake would have to sort of do something like that to miss out and prevent itself from having um, the orthogonal connection. And then you can see, look, there would be a white area there of size five. Um, anyway, those are the rules. Hopefully they're, they're very... Um, they're, well, hopefully they're clear. Do have a go. Honestly, these these Saturday puzzles for many people are the treat of the week. So, um, yeah, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Uh, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking. So the first thing I'm going to do is ignore the rules when it's when it talked about the white areas, because I am going to. Well, actually, we've got to make a decision, don't we? What color is our snake going to be today? Probably gray. Do you think or should we mm, actually we could make the snake no let's make the snake green and we'll make the the one the so-called white areas we'll make those gray um and well okay so the one area is of size one so that must be surrounded orthogonally by green. All of these four squares must be snake. That's what we're being told. And because this is the head and the tail of the snake, the snake can't go to these two squares, can it? Because if it did, it would be a very short snake indeed. And the whole of the rest of the grid would be gray and all these numbers would be wrong. So both of those squares, I see, both of these squares have to be gray. And now my area of two is finished. Um, so it must orthogonally be surrounded by green. Maverick's going to do a second pass. I don't know whether we have to... Do you think we'll have to write a two in here? It didn't say that in the instructions. I'm not going to do it. That's got to extend so that our snake is um, connected. Now, because of the... Because it's impossible for the snake to touch itself orthogonally, both of these squares, look, must now be grey. Because if either of these were green, the implication would be that the snake has sort of come in and touched itself orthogonally, which is two naughty words. So they must be grey. Um, I want to... Yeah, well, I can. I, I was going to say, I want to make this longer. And I can. Because 
actually that must be part of a region that's at least size 3 because our 1 region and our 2 region have gone. So this is at least a 3 region. This square must be um, grey, otherwise our snake has, has not ended or started here, has it? So that's got to be grey. And now where do we go? Right. OK, well, here is um, here is quite a standard bit of logic that occurs in these puzzles where the snakes can't touch themselves. The snake can never go here. Because think about it, what would happen if the snake did do a little loop and come into this square. Well, then it would have to turn, wouldn't it? And in turning, to get itself out of this little cul-de-sac, it would touch itself. It would go round, round the corner like that. It mustn't do that. So in fact, not only are these two squares grey, but that logic applies here as well. That, that cul-de-sac is also unfillable by snake. So now, now this area is at least of size 7, which is... So, right, OK, so what we could do, you know, is that it's at least of size 7. It can't be size 8, because to connect to here, it would be at least, well, it would be very large indeed. It would be a size 12 if all of those are grey. So it doesn't connect to the 8. It could be a size 9. No, but not like that. Um, so what I'm seeing there is that I can't... Something here has to be green. Because if nothing here was green, then our grey area would be a size 10 which is definitely not allowed. Um, so... Yeah. OK, so this... Right, so in, in other words, this can't be grey, I don't think. Because if that's grey, we create a naughty cul-de-sac here. So these would also be grey. And that would create the size 10 region we're definitely trying not to create. So that's green. And therefore this square is grey to avoid the snakes touching themselves again. Now, look at this square. We've got a corner of the snake. This is not the start or the end of the snake. That's in these positions. So that's a corner of the snake. So the snake does that. And then that square must be grey to avoid, avoid it being uh, a naughty square. And, well, now these two squares have to be grey. So we are, <laughs> we are gradually building our snake. OK. And now... Well, now there's no way. There's no, there's no way that these squares... Oh, right. This is really cool. Right. There's no way these squares are all grey. Because if all of those squares are grey, all of these squares are grey, and that region is 13 large, which is too big. So the snake must come into at least one of these squares. Well, let's think about that. Because having come into these squares, what must the snake then do? And the answer to that is the snake must get out again. Because this is the start and the end. If the snake goes into any of those squares it has to get out and we know it can't do these tight turns so it's got to do a long turn so it's got to do something like this uh, but that okay but it doesn't do that because if the snake turned in a sort of u pentomino there all of these squares would be gray and that region's of size 10 at least depending on whether this is gray so So I think what has to happen, because basically this square cannot be snake, can it? Because that's the, that's the only pattern. The, snake, the snake's coming into the top left and going out of the top left using rows three and rows one. But what we, and we know, we know it's coming at least here and possibly here. It's either doing that or it's doing that. 
but it's not able to do that because the, the size of the grey left over would be too large. So these two must be green. This must be grey. And we have to get the snake in and out of these positions. So all of those turn green. That can't be green. Otherwise the snake's doing a very peculiar little dance in the top left. Uh, so that's got to be grey. That which means that's green, which means that's green. Now, what about that? that? It's the same logic again. If this was green, the snake is bounded and it's made, we've made a... There's a snake here and then there's a different snake in the bottom right. And we're only making one snake. So that's got to be grey. That's got to be green. Here we go. Um, okay. So if this was green, then we, you know, then we could wiggle, couldn't we? And in, and in wiggling, we would avoid touching this. We can't, these two ends do not touch. I feel it's very unlikely that these squares are going to be, that that square's green, because that's making this very large. Um, in fact, that's quite interesting. If if we do make that green, because these squares are all grey, Maverick's getting lower and lower, this region now is at least size 7, isn't it? And we know that region is at least size 7. We know that region is size 8. So everything else in the grid would have to be small regions, no bigger than 6. So... Okay, hang on a moment. Let me think about this. So we've got to... So the snake's coming here. It can't connect down here too quickly. Because at some point, it's got to come on an excursion into the northwest. So... None of these squares is an end, is it? So each time... Uh, yeah, okay, let's have a look at these squares then as a sort of unit. Yes, I do want to have a look at this. Okay, so... Let's just look at this cell, for example. We know this isn't the end of the snake. So the snake m must extend either here or here or to both of those cells. Now, I don't think it can extend to both of those squares. Although... If it does, I mean, the thing is, these have to get out. And that feels, yeah, maybe that's it. So how do you get these out? These two cannot join up together. So if we think about how this, this strand here, gets to the bottom of the grid, and it must do that because it needs to connect to one of these strands eventually. How does this get out without touching this orthogonally? And it can't quite creep past those one, these, these one regions, can it? It can't get past. It will bump into one of them. And this one, to get out of the top, right top this top left region must also bump into one of these because it can't get out down this side so these two things have to bump into some combination of these things around the one and then and those things have to be then kept apart because if we did for example have that pattern around the one 
then this could join with that, this could join with that, but we've made a big snake in the top of the grid. That's total and utter nonsense. So what I want to say is that I think we're either looking at those two being grey or these two being grey. I don't think we can have it. We, we can't have a U pentomino or, or anything even more dramatic than that. So if we tried to have that, for example, you can see that, yes, OK, we can extend these things. But, but we're just going to create a loop in the top of the grid, whatever that looks like. We can do that if we want, but we're only going to create a, a pond in the top of the grid. And if we create a U, so we connect two edges like this, this we can't make a, we, we've just looked, we can't extend this green into either of those squares and that would be an end because we'd have to do that. So I think what we're looking at is sort of a little triomino like this or a little triomino like that. And providing, okay, so providing they don't bump into each other, that doesn't look too bad. Yeah, okay, so what we can't do is that. So if I was to put my, um, my dots around this one into these two positions, look what happens here. This is a corner, this is a corner, and how on earth... Do I prevent how do, how do I prevent a loop in the top? This has to extend, this has to extend. So this is bumping into this somehow, in fact exactly like that. And this is bumping into this exactly like that, and I can't get the snake out of the top left of the grid. So in fact what we've got to do is not that. We've got to do the opposite of that. Those two have got to be grey. This is a corner. That's a corner these have got to extend these have got to extend and now yeah now it works because this can connect here that one will connect to there somehow oh yes now well now it's really <laughs> now a lot of things are happening because this one here once it connects somehow to there it's got to get out so we've got to come down this column and keep apart from this because that otherwise we're going to create a big loop if we did that, that's just a big loop into the top, isn't it? So that's got to stay away. These two squares have got to not be snake. Otherwise, we've got a snake that's branching and there are no hydras today. These two squares have got to be grey. No snake can possibly go up here. So all of those are grey. So this is at least a five region now. I'm going to put that in. So that's five, six, seven... Or nine it's definitely not part of the eight um, right this has got to grow it can't be of size one or two so it's at least a three yeah it's at least a three and it can't go into the top row because if it does it's it's stopping this connecting to there so this connects to this which means that has to extend. This is lovely, isn't it? It's very, very cool. So this is now at least... Well, th yeah, this region, all of those squares together are at least six now. Because this, this has to join up. It can't be a region of size one or two. So it's joining here, and that will make it at least of size six. So this is six, seven, or nine. Oh, we're very close, actually, to having a sort of six, seven, nine... Um, triple of snake egg regions. Um, this has to extend. So that has to be kept apart. This has to extend. Yeah, what we probably need to do is to find the three size region, wherever that lives. If that joins to there, that's a seven size region. So this would, uh, how would that work? If this was a seven size region, this would be a nine size region. 
This would be a six size read. Oh no, that can't work. That can't work. That's actually really cool. So I'm gonna now claim this square is, this square is green, believe it or not. Because if this is gray, because this region is now at least of size seven, that's gonna be nine. Or well, it's, it's either this is either nine or seven. This is either nine or seven, and this one has to be size six then, which means that whichever one of these is grey, is the end of this region, and that makes this square green. So the snake goes round in a, a circle like that, but that makes all of those squares grey. And now this region isn't size seven anymore. It's size ten at least, and that's too large. So this square here is green which means that square is grey, otherwise the snake's doing strange things to itself. Um, this can't be a size 2 region, we've had that, so that's got to grow. This has got to grow. This can't be a size 1 region, so it's got to grow. It can't be a size 2 region either, that's got to drop down there. So it can drop there and then fence this in at size 7, which would knock 7 out of these squares. Oh, that, how can this be size 9? 5, 6, no, it can't be size 9. I'm not even sure it can be. No, it can't be size 7. If this was size 7, it would take those two squares and this would be cul de sac That's not going to work. It's 5 or 6. So... Hmm, not sure actually. It would be very powerful if these squares are grey. Because that, well, if these are grey, this region is size 7, this region is size 9, this region is size 6, so it's finished. And no, that, does, <laughs> that doesn't work for a weird reason. Okay, that doesn't work because you get two regions of size six. This is a brilliant puzzle, actually. It's, it's a lot. It's, it doesn't solve in the way that normal snake eggs I've done before do. You sort of have to consider whether you're going to create duplicately sized regions. Um, yeah, so, so what, what I want to th think about is whether or not... In effect, I'm thinking about whether this square is green, I think. And I'm saying, if that square is green, the world ends. Because all of these are grey. So this is 7. This is 9, because it's not 7. And it's definitely at least a size 7. So this is 6 and is finished. So that's green. That's green. And what size is this? That's 6. But this is six as well. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't have two eggs of the same size. So this is grey, which means the green is much... So this is, right, this is a four region. I am going to notate that. That's definitely a four region. This can't be a four region. This is at least a five region. So is that impinging upon this? My, oh, i tell you something we could think about now, you know. How do these four strands meet up? And what we can see is that this one, this bottom one, is not going to join there, is it? Because if it does, this snake end is stranded. And it's not going to join there because that creates a, two snakes in the grid. So this one joins there. How does it do that? Well, it can't squeeze through there as well as this one. So this, these two connect along the bottom of the grid. But the fact this is at least five in size means one of these squares at least is gray. So how do these two connect? They're gonna to have to get round a gray that's at least in one of these. So these two must be green. So this is now, right, so this is 5 or 6, and it pairs up with that one. So this is not 6. 
which we already knew because I've already done I've already done length seven region there. Well, this can't be nine. There's not enough space for it to be nine. That must be seven. So that is seven. It's finished. That then is green. So that's grey. This is six. So this is five bobbins. That's not what we wanted, is it? Because how are we going to decide how that works? One of these is... Mm, I don't know. Um... Right, this is not seven anymore. This Oh, this is nine. Well, okay. How does it do nine? It's got to be there. Those have got to be grey. So this is all finished. Which means that the snake comes down here and pens itself in there. So the snake can't touch itself here. Ah, ah. That region is the size three region. Actually, so I'm going to put a two in there because I seem to have got myself into this mode of operation. Ah, right, look. So my snake now has to take that square and therefore to get this five to work, that has to be gray. This must be uh, gray to prevent the snake meeting. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the, yes, yeah, so this is all eight. That's the snake is forced. To, yeah, the snake's forced. It has to go there. Those squares have to be gray. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is beautiful, isn't it? Wow. Um, that is absolutely brilliant. Solve counter one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You've solved the puzzle. The solution is correct. And that that's... I absolutely adore puzzles like this. I know it's a little bit different for us. But it's the same sort of thing. You have to use your brain... And the logic that is embedded by the constructor in the puzzle is so gorgeous. And it's not, you know, I, I don't, I probably do two snake puzzles a year, snake egg puzzles a year. So, admittedly, at least I have some experience with them. But it, it, it's findable, isn't it? It's discoverable. You just have to ask some, you know, fairly clear questions based off what you find and it's it's very is sort of it releases a lot of endorphins sir can you've done it again no surprise there check out gmpuzzles.com let us know in the comments if you enjoy this saturday excursion into the world of pencil puzzles every week and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic <laughs>